I'm going to talk about the updated edit in place feature in Autodesk Fusion 360. Edit in place has been taken out of preview. It is now a mainstream part of Fusion 360. So you no longer have to go into preview to check it off. It is automatically included. But you do need to go under design and check on this box if you want to do associative design in the process. That's under design and preferences. In review, edit in place has been introduced to allow you to take linked components and edit them in the context of the assembly, just like you would open them as you did before. So in this particular case, I'm going to design some drilled holes, tapped holes in this base plate, using this particular component as a guide. So I'll click on this. You can hit the, hit the pencil. You could right click and say edit in place also. So now the big thing that's changed is the associative edit in place. You can have this message come up each time or say not by checking the box. I'm going to say yes. You can change your mind if you like right here between associative and non-associative. Of course associative means that any holes I put in here as a result of this piece will change automatically if I change a piece. Non-associative they will not. So I'm going to leave it on associative. So to start out I'll click on this face and make a new sketch. I'm going to go back to isometric to make it easier to see. Now I want to project those two centers for my tapped hole. So I hit P for project and then I'm going to come down here and I want them linked and I'm going to pick on just the whole edges. I don't want the whole plate. I just want the edges. So I pick on both of them and say OK. I then have reference geometry for my centers. So if I go up now and finish my sketch and go to hole, I can pick on those two centers. Go to tapped. I want to go all the way through and I want to do a quarter 20 hole. Quarter 20 tap. Quarter 20. Say OK. So there are my two tapped holes. OK, so now I've finished my edit in place. I'm going to go up and hit the check box to end edit in place. I could also right click on the component and end edit in place also. Now one of the new additions in the update has been that called assembly context. You'll see that the body under the body, that component, which happens to be that one, has been referenced as an assembly context as for those holes. This will have to be maintained to maintain that center. So if I happen to edit this in place and then go down and change the holes centers, I go right here and edit those whole sketches and change that from one and a half to two and then finish that sketch return let me go back to isometric and now you'll see that the contact is out of sync you got an exclamation point right there so what you want to do is right click on that and say synchronize assembly context. You'll see that the holes automatically jump to the new centers. That's what it's all about, the assembly context. So let's go through the process completed from start to end. I'm going to bring in another component. It happens to be right here. It's very similar. It just have a big hole in it. I'm just going to drag it in. I'm going to move it out and spin it around so I can see the base and say OK. Now I'll put it on this edge for a line up to put those holes in the plate over here. So if I go up under modify, I can use the align command for this task. I can pick on that component at that point right there, which is not really what I want, but it's close. I put it right there. I can then spin it around and say OK. Now I need, remember that part is not held in place. 
I need to move it back just slightly. It's too close to the edge, so I pick on it, and I pick on that, I'll put a minus 0.125 to move it off the edge. Again, remember that part is float, not fixed, so don't move it. So the next step is to go back and edit the base plate in place. I'll pick the pencil this time, and I'll say capture position. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a new sketch on this surface just like it did before. I'll go back to isometric so you can see it better. Again, I'm going to project. I use P. If you don't use P, you can go into Create and pick Project from right here. Again, be sure the link is on. Come over and again, I do not want the whole plate. I just want the edge of the holes and say OK. Now I go and finish my sketch, pick my holes, pick my centers. He remembers the last one. I simply say all the way through. He'll set, still set on quarter 20 and say OK. So now the second set of holes has been made. I can hit the checkbox to leave the edit in place and I now have another set of holes in the base plate. So now let's look at the assembly context and you'll see that another one has been added. Uh, that's the wrong one, it's this one right here, the top level. You'll see, well actually not the top level, it's the part that received the holes. I now have two components, this body and this body. So both of them are related in context to this base plate because the holes came from them. Now, again, if I take this one and edit it in place, and I change the hole centers here, edit the sketch. Whoops, that's the wrong sketch. I apologize. It's this sketch. And I change this from one and a half to one and a quarter. and then finish my sketch and return let me go back to isometric return back you'll see the holes come in to match so again that's what the edit in place now the holes really haven't come yet I spoke out of turn because of, remember you have to uh, synchronize it see the exclamation point so you right click on this and sync assembly context and the hole will jump in place there are a couple other things I want to talk about in relation to the edit in place functionality. The first one is what will happen if I use this plate in another assembly? So I want to save this so it updates everything. And then I'm going to go into a new assembly. And I'm going to place that base plate. That base plate is right here. I'll drag it in. and say OK. Now if I expand the browser you'll see those assembly contacts are brought along with it. So don't let this throw you. It has to maintain these bodies to maintain the relationship to this hole. There is a there's two bodies. They're not a part of this new assembly except they're related to the base plate. If you want the relationship of these holes to be maintained you must retain those bodies. But just ignore them and you're okay. So let's talk about managing this assembly context. What if you wanted to remove the influence of these two components on the base plate? Let's open up the base plate in an individual file and take a look at this. So if you expand it in the individual file, you'll see the different contacts. The first one was for these two holes and the second one for the another. So if I right click on the first one, and I can have three options. Activate content to see the content. You can't edit it from here, but you can see it. You can also right click and break the link. This will keep the holes, but break the link between the associativity between the holes and the part. You also can delete the context. Word of caution about deleting. If you delete it, you'll get a sick sketch because those holes are no longer related because they were related to the part but now they're no longer. 
So you're going to get a sick reference. Doesn't mean they disappear, but you get a sick reference. So I would not recommend that one. If you do want to get rid of the holes, then you would do that. Right click on it and delete and then erase all the holes. But if you're not going to get rid of the holes, please use the one called Break Link. I hope this will help you manage your edit and place parts even better in Fusion 360.